School and Brockton High School. And now for the Norwell starting lineup. Number one, Captain Cal Stoddard. Number eight, Captain Troy Studley. Number 23, Captain Tyler Studley. Number two, Mason Wolf. Number six, Kyle Terranova. Number seven, Sean Coffey. Number 10, Ben Pesco. Number 11, Matthew Cawthorn. Number 13, Ethan Hayes. Number 15, Henry Wheeler. And number 21, Hayes Fatpetik. And now for your seniors from Brockton High School. Number 10, senior midfielder, Captain Junior Gomes. Number six, senior defender and captain, Brendan Gomes. Number 22, senior captain defender, Derek DePino. Number 20, senior midfielder, Odier Montero. Number three, senior defender, <laughs> Claudio Mascaranis. Number 26, senior midfielder, Morcier Ramos. Dead. Number 21, senior midfielder, Bradley Bajin. Number nine, senior forward, Jonathan Rodericks. Number four, senior defender, Claudia Mendes. Number 24, senior midfielder, Daniel Andrade. Number seven, senior midfielder, Brian Deleuze. Number 17, senior forward, Riven Rodericks. Number 12, senior goalkeeper, Fabio Andrade. Number 16, senior goalkeeper, Dalton Rocha. And number one, senior goalkeeper, David Isaac. Those are the 16 seniors that are on the team. Now if everybody could please rise and face the flag for the playing of our national anthem. Ladies, gentlemen, boys, and girls, soccer fans of all ages, this is Armand Colombo Field here at Rocky Marciano Stadium, and today it's a matchup of two heavyweights, a 15-round fight, the Norwell Clippers and the undefeated Brockton Boxers. I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, and I am joined alongside today by 
the good looking son, <laughs> Roberto Nieves. How Roberto, you doing? Roberto, pleasure to have you. Beautiful afternoon here at Marciano Stadium. Well, it's a pleasure to be on this right with you, Mad Dog. And uh, yes, I'm excited to go ahead and see a great game between Brockton and Norwell. You talk about two of the best programs in the state. Norwell coming in at 13 1 and 3. Mm -hmm. Brockton. 15-0-2. These, mm -hmm. these guys both could make deep runs in their respective tournaments. Oh, yeah. I can see it happening um, in Norwell. Um, they have a pretty good team going on over there. And um, Brockton, number one in the state um, for the boys. I can see them going pretty far as well, too. Um, totally agree. Um, pretty excited to see this game, see how it's going to end out. Senior day here for the Brockton Boxers. 16 seniors on their team, <laughs> including the three goaltenders that have started all season. For Brockton, they have a lot of, of turnover going into next year. How do you keep the emotion steady in the final game and keep the goose egg in the loss column? Well, you know, what they need to do is just go ahead and play tough. And I, I know it's senior day, and they're, they're going to play hard because, you know, this is their last regular season game before they get into the playoffs. So they're going to go ahead and give it all they got out in the field. And um, I'm really excited. Um, I think the coach did a great job, you know, taking care of this Brockton team with all these seniors and giving them a fair amount of play. Um, other, than, other than that, I can see them go ahead pretty far, like I said, into the fight playoffs. And they just got to play hard, come out, play strong, play the game that they've always been playing since the beginning of the season. Sophomore head coach in Herminio Furtado, his second season at the helm of the Brockton Boxers. Mm -hmm. Not a bad first two years for Brockton. No, not a bad, uh, not a bad year. I think this year is actually much better than last year. I think Herminio had a, you know, a little change from going from, you know, down from freshman to JV level all the way up to varsity. But I think he took very good control of the game, um, control of the team this year than he had last year. And um, the most important thing about it as well too is all these kids are doing great in school, and that's a big contribute because of the coach. Well, in net is Fabio Andrade. Like you said, one of the three seniors. That's pretty back tough. stopping the boxers. Pretty tough to have three goalkeepers as seniors. They did call up one from JV for their tournament run. That is Seth Anderson. Not expected to see action today. Norwell wearing their away blue jerseys with a gold right shoulder. White trim, Brockton in their home whites with red and black trim. Norwell with first possession. And we are underway. Norwell immediately trying to send a long ball in on the boxer defense. No harm, no foul there for Brockton. Andrade over to Claudio Mascarenas, one of the 16 seniors on this boxer's roster. Hmm. They got a good job for number four over there from Brockton. Um, see him there, Mendez. Great job. This is Odair Montero sending it up for Jonathan Rodriguez. Jonathan's short pass is incomplete to Reven Rodriguez. Ping pong's back to Jonathan. And now shielded almost out of play. Mascarena sending it back towards the Norwell goal. One thing about Brockton and what they're going to do to go ahead and, you know, get this win is to keep possession, make sure their first touches are good, you know, and keep a calm, level head. A lot of emotions heading into the final regular season game here at Marciano Stadium. Of course, senior day, <laughs> trying to keep the undefeated record. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of things happening here <laughs> for the boxers. A lot. There's a lot. But uh, I think he, I think they're going to be okay, um, regardless of the results of the game today. You know, a win or a loss, they're going to be okay on the playoffs. Reven Rodriguez launching a shot off of the head of one of the Clippers. It's loose Ooh. and taken down. No call. That was a good no call. No call. Brendan Rodriguez pushed from behind, or Brendan Gomes rather. Mascarenas up to Reven Rodriguez. Taken by Junior Gomes back to Odeir Montero. And finds its way back to the back line. Oh, 
This game, the second of two here this afternoon at Marciano Stadium. The Brockton Lady Boxers drawing a 0-0 tie against Cardinal Spellman earlier in the day. Oh, that's good. They finished their season 3-13-2, but they made the tournament. They did. They did. They won the big three. So congratulations to the Brockton Boxers girls for winning it. And uh, good luck in the tournament. Uh, best wishes. Meanwhile, the Brockton boys team finishing off their season with two 15-round fights against the Norwell Clippers in the last game of the regular season down at New Bedford on Monday night. Oh. Yeah. Six o'clock start for that one. That's going to be a good game. They're one of Brockton's two draws this season. A 1-1 yeah. draw earlier in the season here at Marciano Stadium. Well, New Bedford and uh, Brockton has always been a, a great match. Deep oh. throw and it's loose and it goes in and Brockton is on the board early. That's a good goal. See, if the keeper would have just kept his hands down and just let the ball go in, it would have been an indirect kick, but he touched it, so that means that the ball is back into play and it just went in. Well, we're gonna see right here whether any other Brockton boxer touched it. 22 did it. His goal. Derek DePino. Derek DePino, who threw that ball in, the only boxer to touch it, as confirmed yeah. by slow motion instant replay. See, if the keeper would have just let the ball go in, it would have been an indirect kick, but uh, didn't, didn't realize that. He touched it and it turned into a live ball. So Brockton's got this trend. They score within the first 10 minutes of the game. Mm -hmm. And then there's a lull. <laughs> and then they turn it on in the second half. It's always been like that. They get, they uh, go out hot in the beginning. Then um, when it gets into the game, they, they kind of complicate things themselves. You know, They want to try too much instead of playing simple. Um, sometimes it's a good thing. Sometimes it's a bad thing. But you know, hopefully... In the long run, this is going to be a good thing for them for today. So it's one nothing boxers. Derek DePina, senior co-captain of this team with the boxers' goal. In the earlier game today, Mary Wigley of the Cardinal Spellman Cardinals took a hard fall in a Oof. collision with one of the Brockton boxers. It has been confirmed she has a broken ankle. Oh, man, that's terrible to lose someone like that and towards so far towards the end of the season and you go ahead and have a bad injury like that. It's, it's really tough, really tough. Ugly situation, game stop for about five minutes as she was helped onto a cart and eventually into a car to head to the hospital. Uh, my prayers go out to her and her family out there. Thoughts and prayers out to Mary Wigley and the Cardinal Spellman Cardinals, losing one of their senior co-captains. Mm. Um, nice play. Cool. This one's going to go against Brockton. Good call. It was a little push. I like the Brockton High School's fight, the Brockton Boxers' fight. They, they, they're out there and they, they fight and compete every single year. The boys, pro, the boys program's just been phenomenal every year I see them. And uh, this year I think it's the best team out of, out of all. Ooh. Now an old school no. hip check thrown against Reven Rodriguez. No call, okay. Bad throw. Bad throw for Norwell. Brockton will take over. I think they, they um, just gave him that call because he he didn't he missed the other one. <laughs> All's fair in love and war. There you go. If there's anybody that knows calls and the rules of soccer, you're wearing a referee shirt today. Oh, thank you. Yes, I'm the referee assigner for Brockton Youth Soccer Association, and uh, I uh, train referees left and right. <laughs> Start them when they're a very young age until they get older. Um, 
and helped him get certified and learn the game of soccer. Brockton has this excellent short passing game that creates a ton of space, as you see there. Yeah, that type of play that they play is kind of a, a, a European type style, but ticky -tack. Now a shot, oh, oh, and it goes just wide. That was a great shot from the 18, that was awesome. You gotta keep the ball low, though. You take a look at the replay of that shot. Gotta keep the ball low. The eyes were just a little bit off, trying to find that top left corner. Just got a little too excited with that kick. Phenomenal setup by awesome. the Brockton boxers right there. Exactly, and it goes back to what I was saying back in the plays. They play a quick ticky-tacky play, a very European-style play. Um, obviously, you know, Brockton's a lot of Cape Verdean people around here. They obviously know the game of soccer, and they try to go ahead and mimic that style as well, too. It's very beautiful. Uh, Beautiful style tactic. About nine minutes into the first half, one nothing boxers on top of the Clippers. Can't be nuts. Can't be such a beautiful day today awesome weather excellent weather we stood at about 61 degrees for the first game right now we've gone up a little bit we've hit today's high of 63 degrees wind picking up just a little bit uh. as Norwell has an opportunity here the oh. cross is broken up by the back line of the Brockton boxers a little bit of wind, 12 miles an hour directly to the south. Well, you know, I would say this. These kids are not going to complain about that. <laughs> they're running, so they're getting hot. <laughs> little so a little breeze. The air's not too dry as can tend to happen no. in late October. It is 59% humidity, down from about 70 for the girls' game, mm -hmm. and a 49-degree dew point. Ten minutes into the first half, and Brockton keeping with the tradition of the season, scoring in the first ten minutes. Mm. And the excellent short passing game, European style. We've seen other teams coming in, just try to send long balls over the top and spring someone loose. Yeah. <laughs> As you can see with the boxer's record, completely unsuccessful in those efforts. No. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's very hard. That, that's why Brockton and New Bedford, when they play against each other, it's, they're both, you know, coming from European sides, you know, Portugal, Portuguese, and um, Cape Verde, and they love playing that type of style. So that's why they always have a great battle um, with each other. Always awesome game to see. Oh. Now this one's sent out, and Norwell will have their first corner kick of the afternoon. Let's see what Norwell can do. Uh, they have a couple guys lined up in the back of the 18 right now. A couple tall guys. You got number 11 coming in there from Norwell, Matt uh, Cawthorn. And Brockton has to go ahead and regroup themselves. They're kind of confused back there with all this lineup. Long kick sent on the other side, and it's headed up and out by the Clippers. That was a good idea. Long ball, back post. But those things are going to kill Brockton if they don't go ahead and understand what type of play they're playing right now with the corner kicks. Ooh. Yeah, we have a wow. Clipper taken down just inside midfield. That is Kyle Terranova. So a free kick for the Clippers. It's going to take us about, boy, they could probably get another four yards out of the ball placement. <laughs> Electing not to, sending it long over the top. No Clippers in the area. And five Brockton boxers converge on it. 
In order for Norwell to go ahead and try to break down Groton's uh, team, they have to play very disciplined and very quick playing with Norwell. And, you know, they have the opportunity to take the shot. You got to take the shot. You know, Groton's not going to give you too much opportunity. Back line. Led by Derek DePina and Claudio Mascarenas. Solid job all year. Oh, awesome. The back line of the boxers. Phenomenal job. Head coach Romino Furtado going with the more defense minded goaltender today, Fabio Andrade. He said it's almost like having an extra defender back there for Brockton. You know, that's, and that's a huge help for the Brockton defensive line because they can go ahead now and push up and push up Norwell's uh, offensive players. And even if the ball goes over their back line, you know, you have Fatado back there to go ahead and clear the ball up. Uh, so it's awesome to go ahead and have a goalkeeper that can play that, that type of style. Great, great ball movement. Good. And now we're going to have an offsides against the boxers. That was a close offsides, very close, but you know what? We can't. And the ref with just said it. He said it was <laughs> it was about a foot. We're gonna take a yeah. look at the replay here. Oh, just that might be half a foot offsides. <laughs> I would have let it go. Yeah, I, well, I think these referees understand this is uh, gonna be a good game, and they want to just call it tight. Hopefully, Brockton get the same uh, call as well too. No slight to the other boxer goalkeepers, Dalton Rocha and David Isaac. Right. Head coach Furtado said that having Dalton Rocha, he's very good with his hands. He's very oriented to use both his hands and his legs and is an excellent goalkeeper. David Isaac has the strongest leg of the three. Mm. Which is all good key points. Um, I think when coach sees the matchups of the teams that he plays against, I think he plays for, you know, like the matchups. If a goalkeeper has, if this team is very sh um, very good on the offensive side and shoots a lot, you want a goalkeeper to have some good hands to go ahead and catch that ball. Um, you know, if there's a team that's not pushing too much offensively, you want a goalkeeper that's going to be coming out that box and kicking that ball strong up in the air. So get the volunteers and that's not the best unit. That's about 20 bucks, so 20 bucks makes sense. 25 minutes to go now in the first half. Brockton hanging on to that one to nothing lead. Norwell without very good offensive opportunity as of yet. Brockton trying to set up shop in Ooh, great play. Norwell's side of the field again. This Brockton one. needs to go ahead and, you know, there we go, switch the side of the ball. Norwell's playing a really good defense in the back. Very close and tight. Seems like they have about six <laughs> players in the back for defense. <laughs> Andrade sending this one well north of the 50-yard line. Jonathan Rodriguez trying to settle it down. Yeah. We got to have a little bit more control, boys. Brockton almost with a, a healthy mix of the short game and sending it over the top today. Yeah, well, like I said, that's the part of the uh, strategy that Tiki Taki play. You go ahead and get that short ball going, you get the defender confused, and then you find that long pass. And it works now all the, the time. the cross is broken up by Brendan Goes. Oh, what a, a shot. shot, and it goes wide. Nice shot. I give it up to Norwell. This is what Norwell needs to do. In order to score a goal against Brockton, they got to capitalize on their mistakes. Um, and that was a good attempt um, to capitalize on their mistakes. And Brockton's not going to give up too many mistakes. Not really a missed header for uh, Brendan uh, Gomes, but five, one that five, fell five, in the four. wrong area. And Norwell was able to launch a one-time <laughs> shot. It's it found be its way wide to the right. It's going to be key for Brockton to keep possession of the ball and try to limit their mistakes in the back. Stoppage on the 
far side. Brockton throwing it in. So Brockton top ranked in the state. Undefeated 15-0-2. They've got one final game against New Bedford to wrap up the regular season. And then we enter the unknown. How do you prepare for... Well, could be any team. It's almost guaranteed Brockton will have a home game and, and a bye in the first round. Yeah. I mean, I've played for Brockton. I graduated 2006, and we made it to the playoffs a couple times. And, you know, I kept, I kept myself mentally prepared when we were about to go into the, the playoff season. And, um, you know, we was never ranked that high, but at least we, we made it in there. And, you know, I physically and mentally prepared myself for that. Brockton. Ooh. Oh, and here's a dangerous play. That should have been a card right there, sir. Oh. It's just going to be a stern warning. Stern warning. So we have a injured boxer. Ugly collision. That was ugly. A little bit. A little bit reckless on the Norwell player. It's Junior Gomes who got into the collision. Of course, Junior's missed a few games this season due to injury. Well, it's going to be key for uh, Brockton to make sure that he stays healthy out on the field. He seems like he's doing a good job today right now. Um, you know, just got to protect yourself a little bit. You know, that's why we got these referees for to go ahead and call those fouls, but uh, you know, de I definitely should have seen a card come out on that. Brockton, normally the narrative is for all of Brockton sports, oh great, we're going to have to go up against a Catholic Conference team and that's going to be the end of our postseason run. Brockton has already beat BC High a blowout 7 to 2. We've already beat Severian 3 nothing. Is there a team in Division 1 South that can hang with the Brockton Boxers? To be honest, I I don't think so. I mean, I I like Lincoln Sudbury. They were a good team last year. Um and they had a really good strong team. Um uh, but this year this this team has been very 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 strong. Um and I think they can go all the way. Of course, it was Lincoln Sudbury ending the boxers' hopes in the state semifinals here at Marciano Stadium. Yeah, very tough, very tough, uh, tough loss for Brockton on that. They went so far, but like I said, this team that we have right now, it's it's a, it's a much different dynamic, different, different. We have a different coach in there. He seems like he knows the systems and know how to play the game and teach these kids how to play the game the right way like I said it's just it's up to the Brockton kids to go ahead and keep their possession keep the possession keep their minds cleared and focus on winning the game well watch out because here comes Brockton's goal scorer Leonardo Texera has scored two goals in the last four games for Brockton here at Marciano Stadium they need to get him going again <laughs> two oh. goals in each game yes they need to keep him going. He needs to keep him putting uh, putting goals in the back of the net for Brockton to go ahead and, you know, rank a little bit more higher in the seeds. I think they're going to be ranking number one in the seeds, right? They just gotta it would take a few small miracles for them not to be ranked <laughs> number one. As you mentioned, different head coach from when Brockton had a very deep postseason run, knocked out against Lincoln Sudbury in the state semifinals. It yeah goes deeper than that the head coach at that time Rick Robbins a good coach but he's an American <laughs> in, and in layman's terms he's an American a lot of these kids English is not their first language head, co head coach now Herminio Furtado same situation when he was playing for Brockton High in the early 90s he was going through the same thing that these kids are going through now and yeah, and it's great that he speaks both languages, uh, English and and uh, Creole. The correct term for Cape Verdean language is Creole, and um, and it's good because now these kids can feel comfortable talking to them, 
and especially these kids that just come from out of the country going ahead and uh, studying at Brockton High School, they can go up and talk to him and have no problems communicating with their own language. Um, one thing I know about Herminio is that he's doing a great job, not taking any, anything away from Rick Robbins. I think he did a great job at, oh, oh nice ball. Here it is for Texera oh. and he collides with the goaltender. That was a nice run, a nice ball from Brockton. They need to capitalize on those opportunities. That was a great job. Here we go on the replay. There's a collision for you, Jonathan Rodriguez and Cal Stoddard, the goalkeeper for the Clippers. It was a great job from the Clippers. What do, you, what do you think about a no call there uh, I mean, on either team? Uh, I mean, I, if you're going to make a call, you would have made a call against Brockton on that one, I would have assumed. But, um, you know, I liked it. The referees are just letting them play. You know, it's not getting too crazy. Ooh. This one kind of ping-ponging <laughs> towards the Norwell net. Sometimes that's the best goals is when it gets deflected. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, li I like the referees, how they're just letting the kids play, you know. Um, it's gonna be, they're going to be moving up to the next level soon in college, and, you know, they're going to be a little bit more brutal in college than it is right now. So, you know, get used to it. <laughs> well, Brockton soccer has taken over. Division One soccer. Oh yes. Of course, Jen Caruso playing down at Brown University. Mm. Great player, one of the good players I've seen him grow up. Ivy League Player of the Week uh, yeah. a few weeks ago. I know he was uh, he was a tremendous player for Brockton, and uh, very proud, very proud to see that Brockton's getting on the map right now. Um, not just only for football or basketball, but at soccer as well too. This program has been. Um, a long way is coming and it's just actually starting to shine up right now and I'm very proud well that being said a third game here at Marciano Stadium <laughs> after the conclusion of this game is, now, is an alumni gonna, game is that going to be televised it's <laughs> not going to the revolution <laughs> will not be televised oh, okay 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 good I, I haven't worked out for like almost a year so I'm kind of a little rusty but we figured some of the alumni would rather leave <laughs> their uh, their now exploits to themselves. So talk about a lot of history in this Brockton program, and there's a lot of former players coming back to Marciano to play again. Yeah, I mean, to be honest with you, some these kids down that are playing. They watched us when we was growing up playing. They watched us when they were younger. And they learned from our mistakes when we did and everything. So, you know, it's going to be great to see a lot of my old colleagues playing <laughs> and um, playing one more time with them. Um, I thought I retired, but I guess I came back from retirement. You can call it a Jay Cutler move if you want. <laughs> but um, I can't wait. It's going to be exciting. Oh, nice This one drop. punched out by Andrade. Is he's collided with one of the Clippers. Oh, nice job. Now it's Rodriguez who can't catch up with it. All the way back to DePina on the Brockton back line. He sends it back to Andrade. And Brockton's playing very smart, controlled. Not trying to go ahead and put too much pressure right now. they need to do is get the ball down on the ground. There we go. Get the ball on the ground and find the opportunities. Oh, and a miss head by Paolo Romalo. And that, not sure if he had a wet spot or <laughs> what, but he went up and yeah, he, he couldn't find his feet <laughs> under him. I think he got confused. Should I use my head or should I use my feet? <laughs> Well, Brockton has possession again. It's out of here, Montero. Uh, Reven Rodriguez and Junior Gomes working with it. See, Brockton has that great little passing right there, but, you know, you got to have your first touch. Your first touch has to be clean, and you got to know what you're doing. Now, Mascarenas to Leonardo Texera. Sent out of play by Norwell. Very smart. 
No rush. If you got the lead, why rush it? Jalen DeRosa, deep throw and headed. And we're going to have a push against Brockton. Got to keep your hands down. One thing with these boys, they love to use their hands. You can't push off on the player. Here's a good punch out by Fabio Andrade. A great, great save from Fabio. Playing excellent. Let's see if he can go ahead and hold this shutout for his team. I'm, I'm pretty sure this team has confidence in him. But like I said, Norwell has to go ahead and capitalize on Brockton's mistakes in order to go ahead and try to beat this team. Pina over to Romalo. Oh. Go ahead. Nice play on. Nice play on. We Can have, have no call. See, I see what the referee was doing. The referee played adva advantage. Brought and gained possession back at it. And they controlled it. So the referee seemed to foul. But, you know, played the advantage. You don't want to go ahead and stop the play, flow of play too much. Called for the high leg. High leg against Snorwell. There's the deep throw from Jalen DeRosa. There's a great head. And that's the push that was ultimately called against the boxers. Yeah, Junior needs to just keep his hands down. He's a tall guy. Just hit it up and just jump for it. You don't need to go ahead and push. It's not only former alumni and the, we'll call it the boxer family uh, of soccer coming together later, but there's a certain family tradition in Brockton, uh, athletics really. We see it right here in the press box with <laughs> Felix and Roberto, father yeah. and son, a lot of father and son duos and mom and daughter duos playing for Brockton High Soccer. Talk about the family aspect. Well, it's great. I mean, I have my daughter in the Brockton Youth Soccer uh, Association program, and she's loving it. I'm her coach as well, too, with my um, brother that's actually the head coach, uh, which he will be here <laughs> anytime soon. I think he's in the stands. But, ooh, great shot from Norwell. Uh, but it's it's just been – it's 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 great. I mean, once you get into this program, it's really hard not <laughs> to contribute in – you know, have your kids, you know, follow your footsteps. Um, my dad did a great job, you know, I mean, very super supportive of me and my brother when we was playing, was part of the booster club for Brockton High School, and, you know, I couldn't ask for any uh, anything better than that. And, you know, I'm hopefully going to be doing the same thing with my daughter when she gets up to this level. Felix, I hope you heard that. <laughs> He's focused on the game. So <laughs> ingrained in the game. Yeah, he's so focused on the game. Hopefully he'll, um, you know, review this <laughs> later. <laughs> Nine and a half to go in the first half. Oh, free kick for Brockton. Brockton hanging on to that one nothing lead over the Norwell Clippers. Brockton got to understand. I know you got the one nothing lead, but you got to gonna put another ball in the back of the net. Get a little cushion for yourself. Oh, and here's Reven Rodriguez with some space. He launches a shot. Uh, Saved by Stoddard, and he dives on the rebound. Reven, he has to go ahead and place that ball off in the corner. He just took a shot right at the keeper. A lot of space is... He might have had another... Half a second there, he could have settled it down and perhaps aimed his shot a little bit better. He just got a little too excited. A little too excited. Shot the ball at the keeper, made the keeper look like a stud. Great save from the keeper as well, too, though. Great save from Norwell keeper. But, uh, you know, those are the type of things that Brockton needs to just, you know, settle down, talk to them, let him know he had the time to go ahead and settle down and put the ball in the back in the side corner, back post. Um, keep the ball low. Trek over there for number 15. Uh, Henry. Mm. 
It's Jalen DeRosa in the middle of the field, Odeir Montero. Back to Mascarenas. We have a lot of Brockton kids just walking around now. They're getting a little too comfortable, and this is the reason why they always lose, or let lose the juice in the middle of the game because they get too comfortable. And here's a dangerous oh. play, and we have a whistle and a stoppage as well, was Jonathan Rodriguez colliding with number five of the Clippers. Charlie Pesco. That's a tough collision. The old forearm shiver from Rodriguez. Great job from the referee controlling the game, telling them to, telling them to calm down. That's an interesting call. We're going to see a drop kick. Because yeah, I don't know who the foul is for. So if you don't know where the foul is for, let's go ahead and have a 50-50 drop kick. Well, the, the ball was away from the play in all fairness, so the refs were looking elsewhere. They look over and they see two, see two players on the ground. Yeah. They have to automatically stop for the kid's safety. And usually on that rules is when you, you still have the ball in play, but two kids are down, you stop the play. And wherever the ball is stopped, you go ahead and do an automatic drop ball on that so the teams can be fair on it. Garosa to Montero, up to Rodriguez. Got a play off of Norwell. As the alumni are starting to fill in here at Marciano Stadium. <laughs> These old guys over here, they're working their butts off. Hope they're ready for it. Junior Gomes can't keep it in play as it finds its way over the end line. I, I can see my brother right now right there. <laughs> he's ready. He's soccer ready. He looks ready for action. Oh, he's, he's always ready. He's always ready. <laughs> Great head. We got a substitution coming in. And it is Edson Lopes for the Brockton Boxers. He replaces Raven Rodriguez. Great job. I think that was the first uh, substitution for Brockton. Um, in there. Uh, Coach Aminio kept them in there for a pretty while, pretty long time. Cool. Uh, a couple more players. The refs definitely letting the boys play today. It's good. It's good. They want them to go ahead and get game ready for this playoffs. <laughs> Norwell expected to go top seed in Division Two. Yeah. And Brockton top ranked in the state, let alone Division One South. I know, and you know, good uh, big um, props to Norwell um, being a high ranked team for. Ooh, here's a nice shot. shot. It goes just wide. Uh, being a high-ranked team in Division Two, playing against a Division One Broughton team, I mean, even if they lose 1-0, 2-0, they got to give it up to them. That's they're playing against a really good bunch of boys. This is an excellent get ready for the tournament game for Norwell. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely, and for Broughton as well too, because they got to go ahead and learn from their mistakes, and you know, hopefully they can polish it up. Just north of four minutes to go in the first half. Brockton oh. still up one nothing. Dangerous play or a trip called against Brockton. And this is what I was talking about is Norwell has to capitalize on their mistakes, on Brockton's mistakes in order to go ahead and get, get that shot off. Mascarenas with good ball control, and now it's oh. Gomes to Edson Lopes. Nice hustle. Back to the middle of the field for Junior Gomes, starting and stopping. Great and ball. now up for Leonardo Texera. Texera handles the pass that had some Chinese mustard on it. Over to Jonathan <laughs> Rodriguez. Rodriguez pops him up into the box. Texera trying to get his head on it, and it's loose, and it's picked up by Stoddard. <laughs> I don't think he was ready for that ball or he just mistouched it on that first touch. 
Uh, but that ball did come in there sizzling. Whistle from 30 yards south of the play. Kick for Broughton. Now Broughton has to go ahead and try to capitalize on this free, free play that they're gonna have. About 35 yards out from net. Norwell not gonna send a wall in. Kick into the box. Oh, yeah. Ping pong around and shanking the shot. was Jonathan Rodriguez, who didn't try to settle it. He just tried to launch a one-timer with gusto into the back of the net. I think he got a little too excited on that, and he just wanted to go ahead and get it out. Thought he had some pressure. This is communication from Brockton has to be a little bit better with them. They have to talk to each other and let them know that they got to calm down. Wait. Now Gomes with a direct hey. shot and a sizzler from 30 yards out. The senior captain with a second goal for the Brockton Boxers. What a great goal from him. He had some time. He looked around. He said, hey, you're not going to pressure me? You know what? I'm going to do this to you. Well, Gomes from the same area had the opportunity earlier in the game that went wide. No mistake on this one. <laughs> He's like, it's not going to happen to me twice. Great job. Great poise, you know, and great recognition of the play, what was around him. He seen that his defense didn't come up, step up to him. Then you know what? He's punishing him with his nice shot from the outside. So it's two of the co-captains, Derek DePina and Junior Gomes with the Brockton goals. Under two minutes to go, Leonardo Texera for Jonathan Rodriguez. Rodriguez goes down, fair play called for Brockton and now it's going to be a push against the boxers with about a minute left here. He thought he in had the got, first half. He thought he had a foul um, and then he came back and retaliated with a little push. Can't do that, my friend. Can't do that. Norwell back the other way. Maybe about 30 seconds left in the first half. Is Andrade coming all the way out and he lowers the shoulder on number 10 of the Clippers, Ben Pesco. Yeah, he's just trying to make sure that he knows that, hey, you know what? I'm not a keeper that's going to step back. I'm going to come out there and get that. Sign him up for the football team. <laughs> Technically, we're playing football, right? <laughs> Renelson Mendez into the game. And he's going to replace Jonathan Rodriguez at forward. Mendez listed as a defender. Interesting move. Interesting move from Herminio. Rodriguez has had a strong game. Emotions running high for Jonathan as he just had that opportunity in the box. So maybe, uh, hey, Jonathan. It's okay, you missed that shot. Settle down. Yeah. First half comes to an end. It's 2 nothing. Boxers over Norwell. Roberto, what did you see that you liked in that first half for Brockton? What can they improve on to finish the, the win here today? Well, what I see from Brockton is that they had great touches, passing the ball, ticky-tacky play, a great job doing that. One thing that they need to do is settle down when they get into the box and they got pressure on them. They need to settle down and keep their heads up and communicate with each other. If they can do that, they can go ahead and put a couple more goals in the back of the net and call this game. 2-0 Brockton over the Norwell Clippers at halftime. We're gonna step aside and take a short break and bring you second half action right after this. Green hat, red hat, oops. <laughs> red shirt, blue shirt, Yellow shirt, oops. <laughs> Yellow pants, red 
pants. Green pants. Oops. <laughs> morning. Hope you all had a good weekend and are ready to be inspired. One quick thing I want to remind you guys to be studying. Major key alert. Did you just look at your phone while you was in class? You played yourself. Class, today we're talking about inspirational quotes. You want to get that paper? You better turn in that paper and get an A+. Plus. That's a major key. Another one. Another. Mogul talk. You want to reach the mountaintop? You got to go hard. To succeed, you have to believe. Stay focused, fly higher than the eagle. Don't ever play yourself. The key is to make it, so make it. Louise. Louise, can you give me an example of an inspirational quote from recent history? Don't play yourself. The key is to make it. And who said that? I did. Now that's a major key alert. Learn the real major keys to getting to college at getschool.com. Get caught buzz driving, and you could do some hard time. Craig, knock it off. Sorry, Mom. It could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. And that could set you back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Here's your check. Got it. You know, since I got rid of my car, I really enjoy walking. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around ten thousand dollars in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Oh, you're home early. You live with your mom. That'll set your game back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Ladies, gentlemen, boys, and girls, soccer fans of all ages, welcome back into Armand Colombo Field at Rocky Marciano, Rocky Marciano Stadium <laughs> for second half action between the Norwell Clippers and your Brockton Boxers. Once again, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson. Joined alongside my broadcast partner for today's festivities, Roberto Neves. Roberto, an interesting first half. It's 2-0 Brockton on top of the Clippers to start the second. A couple of goals that have been interesting. A snipe from... Junior Gomes from about 30 yards out, and then a funky throw in that was deflected off of one of the Clippers, found its way to the back of the net. Yeah, which uh, two good goals. I mean, I, unfortunately, the first goal was kind of a mi miscommunication on the Clippers goalkeeper, but uh, the second goal was an amazing goal from uh, Gomes from the outside. Did a good job. Like I said, kept his head up, didn't see the pressure, took the shot. Beautiful shot, beautiful placement. It's Brockton pressuring again early in this second half. Just a minute in, already an offensive opportunity. You can see Brockton go ahead and put in the pressure on them now. And it's only the first two minutes of the, the game. Two nothing Brockton over the thirteen one and three Norwell Clippers. Brockton coming in at fourteen zero and two. They have yet to play New Bedford in New Bedford. That'll be an interesting game on Monday night. <laughs> yeah, it's, like I said, it's going to be two European style teams playing against each other. Ooh, this one headed up through the football goal posts. They're going to be playing against each other in, uh, you know, last game of the season. They're going to be playing hard. Nothing says get ready for the playoffs like a 15-round heavyweight bout between big three divisional rivals. Mm. No, it was very exciting. Very exciting to see uh, to see that game on Monday. And uh, I best, uh, best of luck to Brockton out there. Fortunately, I won't make it out there, <laughs> but uh, I definitely will be catching up on, uh, on our Brockton channel to go ahead and see if they have the game going. Junior Gomes 
committing a turnover to number seven, Sean Coffey of the Clippers. Norwell is wearing their away blue jerseys with a gold right shoulder and white trim. Brockton in their home whites, red and black trim. It's one of my favorite parts of the playoffs. We go on the road and we see Brockton wearing their all black jerseys. <laughs> Very intimidating. It's a good look. Yeah. It's a good look. Yeah. Personally, I'm I think they should wear the black at home. When I was uh, in this Brockton system, I had we had some silky, silky white jerseys and some silky red jerseys with a black trimming in the in the middle of it. <laughs> I remember that the the old red stripe on the stomach with black around it. Oh yeah. You know I think those found their way down to the freshmen. <laughs> I bet. I bet. Yeah, well those things are when we had them they were mint. Uh the only thing I didn't like about them was so heavy. So when we ran, you know, I mean it gave us so much pressure. I mean ooh. It was just a, a heavy and especially when you sweat. <laughs> Forget yeah, about it. They're silk. They're not <laughs> like the athletic tech material that they use now. Yeah, I'm glad that the Broughton High, uh, you know, athletic uh, director has um, ordered new jerseys for them and, you know, get them in the right path. These kids look like they can move freely now. <laughs> I wish we had them. No, we're able to clear but not out. Excellent spin move and a shot. And it's off for the Norwell goalkeeper. Number five with the opportunity for Brockton, that's Lewis Spinola. What a great Maradona move that he did. And a nice shot as well, too. I can't I can't express enough how how good this Brockton team is. It's just unbelievable how how composed and they do these beautiful trick moves to get by people and try to create the opportunity to take a shot. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, David Isaac is now in at goal for Brockton. I think um, Jimeno is just saying, hey, you know what? I have three seniors. It's a senior day. Let me go ahead and try to expose both of them. The good thing about this is that he has confidence in all three goalkeepers, you know. And, and it's such a close game still, 2-0. Two, two you know what I mean? He still puts his other goalkeeper in there. It just shows confidence that he has with his team. Would it surprise you at all if Dalton Rocha makes an appearance today? Uh, no, it won't. It won't. I can see him coming in the last 15 minutes of the game, you know what I mean, to to go ahead and finish off his last home game over here in Brockton uh, as a senior. Second question. Could you imagine all three of the goaltenders in their strengths combined into one? <laughs> That would be like a super goalkeeper, I guess, huh? <laughs> I I can. He's gonna take a special player to do that. Um, but if they do find that goalkeeper combined into one, believe me, I can see that goalkeeper going pretty far, <laughs> um, either premier or you know what I mean, at least overseas. Just six minutes into the second half, Brockton already with a few offensive opportunities. No world's playing a pretty pretty deep defensive line. Broughton's just putting too much pressure on them. Norwood needs to keep more possession of the ball like Broughton's doing right now. In the one draw we saw here at Marciano Stadium against New Bedford, the key to that game for the Whalers was whatever Broughton puts us puts on us for pressure, answer it, give it right back to him, and that kind of messed up Brockton's defense a little bit. Yeah, well, you know, what the Whalers did is that Brockton made a mistake. They they looked for the mistake, and when Brockton made that mistake, they capitalized on it. They made sure that they finished the ball and do what they're supposed to do. And, um, you know, Brockton needs to go ahead and keep their composure, keep themselves, you know, and try to be mistake-free when it comes to good teams. They're not going to have an easy tournament. Spinola stepping out of play. Brockton's not going to have an easy tournament. These guys are all going to, they got a target on their back. Another thing we've seen this season, Brockton has had to 
work a lot harder to draw calls out of the refs than the other team and their opponents have. Yeah, well, a lot of referees are getting the buzz around that Broughton's the number one team, so, you know, they're going to go ahead and give the benefit of the doubt some of these calls on uh, for Broughton, you know. They're such big kids, too. These kids are huge. <laughs> these kids are huge, and they're playing very well, so, you know, the referees are going to let them play. Nelson Mendes with it. Spinning, trying to get around three clippers and almost successful in that endeavor. Almost. And there's again a loss of possession with Norwell again. And you can see that Broughton's keeping things calm. Norwell's just keep on losing the possession. They keep the possession for like maybe two seconds and then they get rid of it and they just either A, boot it, or B, make a bad pass. This one sent long over the top towards the corner for Odeir Montero, who can't catch up with it. The time of possession is for Norwell is very short. <laughs> and then Odeir Montero, that guy, his brother, Joselito Montero, I played with him. My brother played with him, too. Great player. Awesome. Awesome player. I think his little brother is a little better than him, though. That's Montero launching one through the uprights. Montero has had a phenomenal season for the Brockton Boxers. He is their corner kick and free kick specialist. Yeah, <laughs> and the funny that you say that is uh, uh, his brother was our, our corner kick specialist, so he probably learned a lot from him. Uh, that guy could uh, curve a ball from the corner right into the net, no problem. Caught me a couple times. Odeir has accomplished a few of those this season. <laughs> yeah, he learned from the best. Go back to the Brockton soccer is really family oriented and a family affair. Again, Norwell losing the possession. Not controlling. But uh, yes, uh, Brockton soccer has been a uh, very family-oriented uh, sport. We, uh, we encourage it. Edson Lopes chasing this one down. Lopes to... Oh. Calm down. Junior Gomes with it. He does indeed slow it up. Fall on a string. And now out of play in front of the Brockton bench. Number eight is going to come into the game. It's Steven Gomes. It's Steven Gomes. He played a really good game uh, last time I was over here. And uh, I think he played really good in the midfield, which he's back in that position again. And, uh, you know, I hope that, you know, he shows out today. Brockton sure would like to add a couple of insurance goals. Leonardo Texera to the middle for Gomes. Gomes' is shot is going to go about a foot and a half wide to the right. It was a deflected off of a, a Norwood player. And once again, like I said, it's Steven Gomes. Once again, doing a great job getting open in the midfield. You know, looking. Great job. That is a deflection. Good, good eyes by the ref. Is Zodair Montero sends this one directly into the box. Not too bad for some senior refs. This one right into the awaiting arms of Kel Stoddard. Stoddard is playing a great job, great game for his team. You know, those two goals, unfortunate, but, you know, he's definitely, this game could be a lot worse than what it is right now. Um, great job from the goalkeeper. Norwell with an opportunity here. Broken up by Junior Gomes in the box of defense. 
That's uh, Norwell's midfields was not moving up and helping out for that kid. Good, great job, good clearance, deflection. Substitution for Norwell. Mason Wolf and Thomas Flaherty into the game for the Clippers. You know, we're looking to uh, change up and see if they, those two can give a little spark going for them. What a great the shot. shot's gonna go wide. Might have, thought that one might have been ruled a deflection. It's gonna be a goal kick for the Clippers. Again, number eight, Stephen Gomes. He's uh, he's the animal out there. I tell you, he wants to. He wants it. Talk about the balance of power in high school soccer. What it was when you were playing, and how it shifted back to the public schools in the area. Well. Who were the top teams when you were playing? Well, our top teams when we were playing, we had um, obviously New Bedford. Durfee will have a couple, uh, you know, one year good, one year bad. Um, we had Nosset. I remember when Nosset, when we played against them, they were a very powerhouse team. Nosset's the only uh, New Bedford loss on the year. Oh, uh, yeah. Nosset is a really good team. I, I We played against them, and we actually lost to them in, in the playoffs. Um, Weymouth has a really good program as well, too. Um, their kids are always always good, well coached. Um, so yeah, I mean, now I see a bunch of these other kids. They they're learning. They're learning a lot. Um, it's just Brockton, I think, has, has excelled in it just because of the ethnicity that we have in our program. Fifteen minutes into this second half, Brockton. Up to nothing as David Isaac comes out to play this one. Good job from the keeper. He read it. He got pressure. He came out there. Not even, no hesitation. Clear the ball out. Good job on the shield from Brockton. You mentioned the various feeder programs into the Brockton High program. Led by BYSA, a program <laughs> I played for when I was about 35 pounds lighter. <laughs> you still look good, man. I, I try. I try. <laughs> it's the hoodie that keeps the, the look up. So BYSA, huge program in Brockton. Huge, huge. Very important for Brockton High soccer and athletics in general to have that feeder program of sorts training these kids up, teaching them the rules so they're not coming in straight and trying to learn the game as they go here in high school. Yeah, I think, um, you know, the BYSA program has prepared these kids very well. The coaches, staffs in the BYSA program has stepped up a lot. Um, our new president, Jeff um, Jeff Shaw, is a great guy. He's, he's doing a good job with the program, changing it around. Um, and... You know, this is what we strive for. At the end of the day is to make sure that our city of Brockton is having a bunch of kids, a group of kids that do good and uh, and know how to play the game of soccer. Um, many times in many years that Brockton had a bad name for each other and, um, you know, I'm glad that everything's starting to change around. They're not just knowing us by, hey, we're a bunch of hooligans out in the streets that we're actually very, very nice kids that actually can go into college and and learn and actually play the game great. Throwing for the Clippers. Oh, nice takeaway. Taken by Mendes, who's tripped up. Yeah, that's, that is going to be a card for number eight of the Clippers. Troy, Troy Studley. And you know what, Troy? I'm not even going to get mad. Mad Dog, this is a great foul. He stopped the flow of the play. He wanted to slow it down. Yeah, you get a yellow card out of it, but you know what? You stopped him from a quick counterattack. Interesting situation that Brockton actually ran into a couple of years ago. 
or got close to it anyway, if a team has, I believe, 10 yellow cards on the year, they will be ineligible for the playoffs. Yes, yes, and that was a big thing about with Brockton um, is that. Ooh. Direct kick in, and it's deflected just over the crossbar. Okay. Brockton ran into it a few years ago. I think they finished with nine. Yeah, and, um, you and know. I think they actually had one of them that was retracted by the MIAA. Yeah, and you know what it is as well, too, is that, um, you know, the kids out here, they get a little hothead and stuff, but it takes a firm coach to go ahead and teach these kids, you know. Um, I think Herminio, like I said, is doing a great job. One, the reason I felt like Brockton didn't give it all with Lincoln Sudbury last uh, last time is because one of the two of the well, actually one of the star players was ineligible because of grades, and that's what uh, was been a big, big, big problem with the program with the boys' side is that their grades were very low and they were ineligible to go ahead and play. Um, this coach right now, I've been hearing great things. He does a little study hall between 2 to 2.30 with these kids, make sure that they do their homework and get everything done. I mean, you can't really complain about it. Jorge Montero in the corner, and this one's going to be a corner kick for Brockton. Well, you mentioned it, head coach Arminio Furtado. It's almost like a relationship on a different level. As you mentioned, a lot of these kids coming over from Cape Verde, from Haiti, a lot of times either one parent or both is back on the island. Yeah, yeah. And uh, most like most of them is their dads, their fathers is back in their islands um, trying to provide, and their mothers out here as well too trying to provide. So a lot of these kids look up to this, to this coach as a father figure, you know, in the game of soccer and this sport. We got an injury timeout. Number 21 for uh, Norwell um, Hayes. Vespitek. Vespitek. I didn't want to say it. <laughs> That's what we're going with. Sorry for the butcher job. <laughs> I'd rather you say Colin it, Mad Dog, than me. Call him Hayes. I think number 19 from uh, Norwell came out as well, too. Jerry Connor earning her paycheck today. Of course, the broken ankle in the first game of the afternoon. Oh, Jerry, Jerry. Already made Jerry, a few trips Jerry. out to the field in this one. One of the finest athletic directors Brockton's ever had. It's been here for a while, too. Long time. I was. She was here when I was here, and I graduated 2016. Not trying to go ahead and say anything. Sorry, Jerry. <laughs> I'm sorry, I graduated 2006, <laughs> not 16. I apologize. The clock <laughs> stops with 2014 <laughs> to go in the second half. Brockton still up 2 nothing with all the momentum. Yeah, Brockton's actually go ahead and, uh, you know, they're, they're taking very well with this game. Um, if they can hold it off for another 20 minutes, it's going to be a very, a very well-deserved win from them. I love the respect that Brockton's doing right now. They're just giving the ball back to, I, th I think, Norwell, or are they just going to play it back? I think. I'm sorry. Oh, the ball was all the way in the Brockton end of the field. I think uh, Norwell uh, kicked it out. Clock still stopped with 2014 to go, and halfway through the second half, we're going to see Dalton Rocha into the game for Brockton. Hey, I was close. I was close. It's 20 minutes, but I said 15. I knew he was going to come out there. And once again, great job for Herminio, trusting his goalkeepers. Getting you know. all the seniors in there in front of a very large home crowd here at Marciano Stadium. Oh, great job. Oh, Texera is going to be. He was off a couple a mile. of feet offsides. He got a little too excited. You can get the replay. Texera called for the offsides. It was it was offsides. Oh so yeah. Going back to the yellow card. 
Do you see that as more of a hot-headed play? Norwell feels like they're still in it, but just can't break through? Or do you see it as, let me try to save a goal and trip the Brockton player? There, I think there was purpose. I think I it was purpose. I don't think it was intentional. I think he just did it because he knew he had to stop the Brockton's momentum from going ahead and have a quick counterattack. Um, so, you know, he just did. It could have been a better foul. Um, and, but uh, other than that, you know, it is what it is. You know, you got a yellow card, you got a yellow card. I, I think, in my opinion as a coach, I would say that was a great foul to stop the flow. The question coming in was, which one of the three Brockton senior goalkeepers would we see as we have another clipper down? It's number six, Carol Terranova, who is He's favoring his right leg. Yeah, I got right back up. He said, nope, you're not taking me out today, coach. <laughs> Head coach Herminio Furtado making sure to get all of his seniors plenty of playing time today. Yeah, and uh, like I said, it was a good job. This is, it's really hard as a coach to go ahead and try to do that, and he's doing an excellent job. Excellent job from Brockton as well, too, being very supportive. This one sent ahead. Jonathan Rodriguez trying to... Nice, keep it in play. Edge. Texera now in the corner, and it's going to be a corner kick. That's a good job from Texera, keeping the ball into play. You know, not giving Norwell some rest and time. Montero going to take the corner kick for Brockton. Right into the box, and it's loose, and <laughs> picked up by Stoddard. Oh, Montero. Crowd starting to fill in even more for this alumni game. <laughs> I think it was mostly players than it is uh, fans on this one. I'm, I'm seeing at least 20, 25 so far. Oh, yeah, definitely. It's going to be a really good game. Can't wait to see it. Well, can't wait to be in it, actually. Long benches. <laughs> Long benches. So hopefully it's just 30-minute games, not 45. <laughs> Matty, you guys can't go regulation these days? Oh, man. Let me tell you something. When you get up to my age, your knees don't work the same. <laughs> Throwing deep in Norwell territory. Derek DePina sending this oh. one in and headed off the football crossbar. And so, out of play. Mad Dog, let me ask you a question. Doing this broadcast for a while and everything, did you feel like you built a personal relationship with this Brockton team? You get to know the players very well. You, you get to know, even down on the sidelines before the game, a lot of times I'm, I'm hanging out, I'm talking to the coach, getting the latest and greatest news on the team, and the players come up, hey, you know, I noticed you said this or you said that, and... <laughs> stuff like that and you see who's really good friends with who and with this team in particular there's a lot of camaraderie amongst the whole team it's not just one click here one click there Ooh. the three goalies have that special relationship they're all very good friends with each other that's really good to have I mean because obviously they all play in the same position so they're obviously going out there to compete, but they also know that they're all they're all teammates at the end. And what they realize is that they want what's best for the team, not just for themselves. But usually you, you get the forwards that hang out with the forwards, <laughs> the defenders that hang out with the defenders, the midfielders kind of pick sides, and that's their group of friends. <laughs> yeah, it usually happens that way. With this team, it's everybody. And, which is good, and that, and I think once again, like I think I can't give enough uh, support onto it. Coach Armino did a great job of not trying to just single out one kid, but you know, if all of them are in trouble, all of them are in trouble. If all of them do good, all of them do good.
Deep throw by Norwell. It's headed out and cleared by the boxer defense. That's a great job of Norwell shielding out. And this is what I was talking about. Norwell needs to be a little bit more, you know, possessive, you know, keep the possession of the ball, you know, and they can't afford any mistakes. Oh. Now we have a dangerous play against Brockton. That was a little trip right there from number 21. Uh, Benjean Bradley. I hope I'm saying his name. Is his name Benjean? Bradley. I, I've been going with. Uh, yeah, I've been going with Beijing. Like Beijing. It's, <laughs> it's spelled B E J E A N. I'm not. I'm but not. I usually see that as Jean, like a pair of jeans. I've seen a lot of it. Um, you know, when it comes to uh, when it's Haitian people that. That Jean could be Jean, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know if it's Bejean or if it's Bejean. Oh, great job. Nice turn. Unfortunate. It's Jonathan Rodriguez up for Leonardo Texera. Texera has been held Ooh. quietly today, and this one's saved by Stoddard. It was a great cross. Just mistouch mis by Texera there. To Rodriguez and Rodriguez. It's just a miss. It's a little bit of a trip there, but I don't think enough to warrant the call. No, he just did a missed touch. He, he should have touched it. He knew himself. He should have just put that ball in the back of the net. We got four substitutions for Brockton coming in right now. It's Leandro Barros. Louis Spinola. Lincoln Cena. And Daniel Andrade all in for the Brockton Boxers. I've seen Jaminio now. It's already here trying to mix up the team now. Okay, seniors, you did your job. Let's go ahead and mix it up and put these kids back out there. I think this is a lot of let's get you guys some playing time so you guys kind of stay loose because once you're in the playoffs, you never know what's going to happen. That is true. That is true. And also, they also got the last game against uh, um, New Bedford, so I'm pretty sure that he's trying to rest up and bench his, his good players for that game. So with the alumni... Starting to pack the stands here, getting ready for their game. <laughs> Give us three names that you think is going to play in the alumni game with three of the greats from, from Brockton Boxer soccer lore. Oh, that's going to be tough. I mean, I'm not sure who's out here in the fans right now. I can't really look. Um, but uh, countless people come up to you <laughs> in the press box. Hey, hey how you doing? I don't want to say it too, too loud. Like, yeah, I think you're the best. And the other people are gonna say, Hey, what happened to my? What happened to me? Why didn't I? Why didn't you say I was one of the best? You know, I think we have a very good. I think all the kids, all the guys, actually, are gonna show up. Not kids anymore, but guys. They're all great. All great players. They're they're excellent. All of them. Um, of course, I'm one of the greats. <laughs> Been told head coach Furtado is going to play in this game. Yeah, he is, and uh, I'm pretty excited to uh, see him play. One of the coaches of the amateur tournament that we saw here back in August, the uh, the Cape Verdean amateur tournament that had four teams going at it for all the glory. That was a close play. He was the coach of... Forgetting, there was four mm -hmm. islands. Each each team was named after an island. They got Braga, Santiago. Santa. He was the head coach of Santiago. Santa. And it's oh. a shot, and it's going to trickle in, and Brockton's on the board in the second half. Great shot from Bejean. Off the corner kick, Spinola took this one, deflected, saved by 
the goaltender a couple of saves. And it is number 21, Bradley Bajin, unassisted. Bajin, Bajan, he, I think he heard us and he's like, hey, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and get my name back on there. Make him call my name again. <laughs> Great job, Bradley. Great job. A lot happening on that one. A couple of excellent saves by Cal Stoddard. Oh, Cal Stoddard is playing a great job. I think he's, uh, I think he's the MVP right now for Norwell right now. He's doing a great job in the back. It's just unfortunate that Brockton's putting a lot of pressure on Norwell and the defense can't get the ball out. Uh, great job from the keeper. Go ahead and keeping time. He must have made time. three, four, five saves on that before Bajin. <laughs> Finally found the back of the net. Yeah, Cal Kyle, Cal's working his butt off right now. He's working his butt off. And if he if he was getting paid, let me tell you something, he's earning his paycheck today. So it's three nothing boxers on top of the Norwell Clippers. Eight minutes to go in this one. Yeah, Platoon big. substitutions for the boxers. Reven Rodriguez, Brendan Gomes, Jalen DeRosa, Brian Deleuz. I missed one somewhere. <laughs> it's the old age, man. It's the old age. <laughs> Moakir Ramos hey. is Moe. the last one. So my dad just went to you know, did a, you know what I mean? A great job, just had a whole bunch of Brockton players just <laughs> subbed in, awesome job. You can see where I get my sports commentaries um, from. One of the greatest. So now I think Brockton's gonna be playing a little bit more relaxed, they're up 3-0. Um, they are working the ball pretty well again. I mean, for me as a coach right now, I would just say, okay, you guys, we're up 3-0. Let's go ahead and move the ball around. Um, let's try to experiment some plays that we worked on in practice. Um, you know, I mean, it wouldn't hurt. Even if they do give up one goal against Norwell, they'll still be up. Um, and it's only six minutes almost to the, to the game. So... I definitely, I definitely would try to work on some plays that we worked on in practice right now. And Brockton has had a few platoon substitutions. Baby. Yeah, Brockton's doing a really good job. And then they just keep in possession. They keep in control of the game. Getting everyone some action in the final home game here <laughs> in front of a very large crowd at Marciano Stadium. Yeah, they are. And um, you know what? It's a very special treat for the alumni as well, too, to see that their Brockton team is not only just succeeding, but also winning the game as well, too. So they're, they're very happy to see that the program is it's still up and running and still doing great. Well, Norwell's going to try the same approach. Four substitutions for the Clippers. Number nine, Alex Kalatayud. Number 15, Henry Wheeler. Number 17, Mikey Roberts, and number 19, Josh Toomey. All into the game for I the think Clippers. It's gonna, I, think the ref, <laughs> I think the coach from Norwell is like, okay, well, let me get these guys some playing time right now. Well, Norwell's expected to go deep in the Division II South Tournament. And I give it up to Norwell. And like I said, Norwell, Brockton was a little bit overmatched for them, you know, but... um. You know, it's good to play against good teams. You l the one thing about losing to a good team is that you can look at your mistakes and, you know, try to fix it. And this is a very big, important important thing to for Norwell to realize, and especially coming into the playoffs. This is the high-caliber uh, team, and this is how they, they need to perfect themselves. They need to have more possession with it. Just under five minutes to go in this one. Brockton up three, oh. nothing. Norwell trying to get on the board. They have numbers up turf. It's a three on three. An excellent step by number four of the boxers. That is Cladir Mendez. Mendez is playing really good defense in the back. I really like him. Like how, how strong he comes in with the tackles. 
This one picked up by Stoddard. Regardless of the score, I might have to give the game ball to Cal Stoddard. Oh, definitely. Cal Stoddard out here, he's he's working his butt off. I mean, this game could be a lot worse than what it is right now. And if, if, if it wasn't for Cal, Norwell would definitely be blown out of the water. But um, good, big props for the keeper over there. Still fighting, fighting until the end, and that's what you want to have. You gotta drop the name. <laughs> you gotta drop the name. <laughs> no, Someone I, just came up to the press box. I gotta keep my names anonymous right now, you know. <laughs> but you know, I'm excited to go ahead and play, and I can't wait to see half my players out here. You know, it's gonna be great, and you know, it's gonna be good. It's gonna be a good treat for the boys as well too to see it. Instead of um, them putting the show off, now we're going to go ahead and play, put the show for them. Oh, great pass. I'm sure these kids eager to see their head coach get in <laughs> on the, the action as well. Oh, yeah, definitely. I'm actually, I invited my girls team to come out here and watch us, me and my brother, play because uh, they're, they're excited to see us play. We yell at them all the time when they're playing. They want to yell at us now. This one headed up. Rockton still with possession. It is Andrade on the far side. Once again, like I said, Brockton's going ahead and having possession of this. This is a great game from Brockton. Great win. Um, they are working, working very hard to make sure they stop this and um, you know get them ready for this postseason. The next, uh, the next challenge for Brockton is to make sure they can beat. Um, New Bedford at New Bedford, um, and um, get into that, get into that playoffs feeling comfortable. Um, just because they're playing New Bedford again, oh, nice pass. Broken up as it was a give and go with Riven Rodriguez. And Brockton could see New Bedford again in the playoffs. So it's Brockton, barring a few small miracles, will move to 15-0-2. The last matchup of the season, as I said earlier, 15 round, old school, heavyweight <laughs> bout against the New Bedford Whalers. Oh yeah. What is this, this game was a fun one to play, a fun one to watch. What does Brockton have to do to kind of keep their heads you still get the goose egg in the loss column. You want to keep that, but you want to be prepared for the tournament. If you take a big lead in the first half, maybe three, four goals, do you put in the subs in the second half, or do you, do you keep the legs churning and you keep players uh, ready to go? Brockton almost guaranteed a first-round bye, so they won't play until next weekend anyway. Yeah, well, if I was coach, I would definitely, if we're winning uh, three or four, then, I'll, yeah, let me see what my substitutions. I actually would want to see... Um, some of the kids I put up on JV play, you know what I mean, that last final game, so I can see what I can work with just in case if something happens, I can use them during the playoffs. Um, but if it's a close game, and you know, if you really want to keep that goose egg in the column, then, you know, I would definitely play your starters and play your strongest players first before they can, you know, I mean, do the substitutions and let the substitute finish off the game. Last time they met, it was a 1-1 one -one tie, and it was a really good good game, close game, you know, and, you know, I think Herminio kept the right people in there with just miscommunication from Brockton's end on that, and um, they just got to limit that. If they limit that against New Bedford, they have a good chance of beating them. And I won't be surprised, Mad Dog, if they see them again in the playoffs, you know. I've I played one time that when we played twice in the regular season, and we met New Bedford again in the playoffs. Pinto into the game for Brockton. Not much time here in the second half, maybe about 45 seconds. It's a good deserving win from Brockton. They played great, they played awesome. They have to just make sure they just don't mess up. Let's keep the goose egg for today, you know what I mean? And just Good team win, I think every single member of the Brockton boxers got in there for at least a few minutes. Yeah, it was good, especially for seniors. Um, great win in, at home. You never want to lose on senior day. <laughs> and so 
It is the Boxers going to move on to 15-0-2. They have one regular season game remaining that is at New Bedford on a natural grass surface as opposed to the AstroTurf here at Marciano Stadium. It's definitely going to be a little change on that for Brockton because they're so used to this AstroTurf that the ball moves a little bit faster on this turf than it is with regular grass. Now, uh, Broughton has to make sure they understand that as well, too, so in order to go ahead and limit their mistakes against New Bedford. So after Monday, one would presume at least one day off for the Brockton boxers, refresh the legs. <laughs> well, Seedings come out on Wednesday, and then we'll know who Brockton is playing in their first matchup of the MIAA self-sectional tournament. <laughs> Unless Coach Emanuel is going to be Bill Belichick and say no, no days, days off. off. No you know days off. You know what I mean? Off. I can see them having one day. But once again, I'm not Coach Emanuel. <laughs> the whistles blow and Brockton moves to 15-0 oh, and 2 on the regular season. The goose egg remains. What are the feelings like, Roberto, going into the final game of the regular season? You've got a goose egg in the loss column. You're 15-0 oh, and 2. You're the top-ranked team in the state. There's a lot happening for this Boxers team right now. Oh, yeah, man. They're going to go out there and try to give it their best against New Bedford. They know in the back of their minds that New Bedford's going to come out there playing their strongest as well, too. So they're going to come out there trying to go ahead and, and try to capitalize and, and put goals in the beginning in the first half. My thing is whoever wins the first half is going to win the second half. Well, Norwell held tough with the Boxers all afternoon. Not a blowout win by any stretch of the imagination. Norwell, a very competent, even for Division II, opponent for the Brockton Boxers. Yeah, I give it up to Norwell. Norwell did the, the best. Um, like I said before, Brockton was just a little too much for them. But I can see Norwell doing very well in their Division II um, playoffs. And big ups to uh, Cal. I think Cal did a great job, and I think he... If he keeps on performing the way he is, I think Norwell is going to be one of the, could probably make it to the finals. Again, the final score, three to nothing. The Brockton Boxers getting a victory over the Norwell Clippers in a heavyweight bout here at Marciano Stadium. Brockton moving to 15-0-2 on the year. Norwell falling to 13-2-3 on their campaign. For everyone here at BCA Sports, my broadcast partner, Roberto Neves. I'm Thank Mad you. Dog Matt Nelson, and we will see you next game.